Welcome back to Deck Building with Bahamut. Today, we're going to be looking at the Madness ability. Now, Madness, the idea is if you're forced to discard a card or you choose to discard a card, you can pay an additional cost and it will play the spell uh, for that, either reduced or generally, generally a reduced, sometimes the same or even a larger cost. While that may not sound like the basis for a deck, it can be put to great use, especially uh, when you revolve it around Red's haste abilities and also triggering madness to uh, activate buffs as well mid-combat. So we're going to have a look at cards that actually use this uh, nice and active ability, because normally a lot of decks uh, revolve around slow buffing up and build up effects. This one is more about speed. So straight off the bat we'll start off in red. Now you can immediately see a few ideas here. Now because Madness revolves around discarding cards, you need cards that have the effect of discarding a card for free without actually paying any additional costs, because otherwise you're just adding uh, additional costs when it's not really required. So to start us off, we'll have a look at Ravenous Bloodseeker. Now, it doesn't really seem that powerful a discard ability, but when you can discard a card to pay a reduced cost for a more powerful card, as well as increasing the attack value of your creature. Now keep in mind you don't actually have to attack with the creature when it becomes a 3-1, but you, you're still discarding a card for free, which makes it very useful when combined with madness. Now, one of the linchpins of this deck is incorrigible use. Incorrigible, incorrigible. Eh, sounds like a bad remix. Okay. So, Encourageable Use, now you can see it has quite an expensive base cost of 5, but discard it and you pay its madness cost, and you have a 4-3 on the field for 3 mana. Now, that's nothing to sneeze at, especially if you've got it out by turn 3. So, as you can see, these two cards work very well together. Playing this on turn 2, and then discarding this card to pay it for 3 on turn 3, you have a 4-3 on the field with haste straight off the bat. So depending on uh, what color mix you want to use, you can either have 2 or 3 in here. Now because I'm going to mix it with black, there's a black one that is nearly equivocal to it, so I'm going to make it an even 2-2 two -two split. So if I was just going red or I was going red in another combination, I will put in 3. Now, since this deck is going to revolve around vampires, we can look at our mixed type card, which is Olivia, Mobilize for War. Now, you can only have one of her in your deck, which can show you how much of a powerhouse she can end up making your deck. Because even just having her sitting there, she's a nice 3 3 flyer for 3 mana, but her activated ability works extremely well with our madness concept because whenever you play any creature you have the chance to discard a card and power up that creature but then the discarded card you can also trigger the madness cost so as you can see the combination can be quite devastating so we're definitely going to add her in now moving back to black so we're back in black <laughs> Okay, another early useful card is here of Falconrath, because we're going to use her to help uh, improve our flying defense, or offense, depending on whichever you need, because you can discard a card to trigger her flip ability and make her a 3-2 flyer, which is of course very nice for only 2 mana, and also that can trigger a madness effect allowing you to play something like this on turn 3. Once again, very useful. 
Now because this deck is so offensive minded, you can add in another vampire by the name of Malkia Coalblade. So whenever you manage to kill anything, this creature will slowly build up and once you've got it over a certain amount, especially when combined with uh, strike enchantments, you can basically just watch as it keeps growing and growing as it kills off your opponent's creatures repeatedly. Plus, of course, it's rather cheap to play, even as even though it starts off as a 1-1. Uh, we definitely want to put in uh, Kalitas, the Necromancer, because we're going to be on a very offensive deck, so we're aiming to destroy enemy creatures quickly. And of course, every creature we kill gives us an additional 2-2 token and allows us to power up Kali Kalitas as well with his lifelink ability he can become extremely nasty very quickly you can also sacrifice additional low low power vampires as well if you don't have your zombies yet so he's got plenty of options in a deck like this so before we were looking at incorrigible use which we we can play quite a powerful creature quite early now Black has a creature that's almost identical, but it's more useful as a defender. Now, that's by the name of Twins of Moira Estate. Now, automatically you can see it's creepy as hell, just two small girls. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of creepy, yes. So, madness costs of three, almost identical. The only downside, of course, is it doesn't have haste, but you're probably going to be using it more as a defender anyway, so haste doesn't really matter in this case. Now, we still need to bulk out our flyers a bit, because at the moment we've only got four. So, what we can add in is also another life source, and quite handy if you use the correct equipment, is Vampire Envoy. Now, every time you attack with him, you gain one life, or tap him, or your opponent taps him, of course. So, as a 1-4 flyer for two, 2 and a black, he's pretty good. Plus, when combined with equipment to increase him per number of matching types, now since this deck is primarily composed of vampires, and a lot of them, you can ramp up his power and toughness quite quickly. Now, I'd like to introduce your potential game changer here, which is Indulgent Aristocrat. Now, he's a 1 1 lifelink for 1 black mana, which doesn't sound that important. But that's not really the important ability. His important ability is paying 2 mana and allowing you to sacrifice any creature. And this puts a 1 1 counter on each vampire you control, which compromises the majority of your deck. So suddenly all your vampires can gain plus one plus one and you can trigger this cheap ability multiple times so without needing to tap him so suddenly your creatures can jump up massively in power mid attack which makes it work very well with the sudden offensive uh, capabilities of this deck so definitely put a couple of him in there and we'll round it off with Insolent Neonate. And once again, despite his looks and one mana, one one creature, his menace ability allows him to attack early, plus you can also use his discard ability uh, to draw an additional card and play a madness creature or spell. So he can be surprisingly useful. So another couple of those in there. Now we move on to Madness Spells. So let's get our types set up. And moving on. Okay. So, one we definitely want to look at straight away Murderous Compulsion. Two mana, two madness, and it's just a cheap destroy any tap creature. So, a couple of those will put us in good stead. Now, for those wanting to play more defensively, or at least to not to be able to deal direct damage as well as buffing themselves we can use arms of the vein now normally it costs three but with madness it only costs one black mana 
so definitely a nice little uh, boost sometimes when you need it. Now for late game play, from under the floorboards can be particularly nasty because it generates a... so at base power it generates three 2-2 two -two black zombie creatures but of course the more mana you have you can trigger it with madness instead and you can put up to X so your mana total minus two black mana and you'll also gain X life as well so definitely can be handy especially when you've got Kalitas out in play but because it's such a high cost card you probably only want one in your deck another thing you can use is Ever After because this deck is quick attackers and they're rel relatively fragile you want a way to get them back now this is more an end game spell so you'd only want one of these but the main one we're going to use if I can find it where are you Liliana? Ah, there she is. Macabre Waltz. Now, as you can see, it's almost tailor-made for a Madness deck. So return two creature cards from your graveyard, and then discard a card, meaning you can pay, it, pay its Madness cost and put it straight into play. So essentially, you're returning two creatures to your hand, and you have the potential to pay to put out a additional one into play, for a reduced cost. All for two mana. How useful is that? So definitely, as our creatures are relatively disposable, we want to put a lot of those in. So as you can see, we've got a large selection already in there, but sometimes you really just need to take the bastards down without actually dirtying your hands. So, if you want direct damage, you can look at things like Lightning Axe, and you can swap between discarding to play a creature or additional spell with its madness cost, or late game you can just pay the mana cost and trigger the spell as normal. One of the key features of this deck is all about quick attackers. Now, something to boost that incredibly powerfully is Stencia Masquerade. Now, even just giving all attacking creatures first strike is worthy of the three mana cost. But, looking at the second ability, you can see that if any vampire connects with your opponent and deals combat damage, you can put a 1-1 one -one counter straight on it. So think of that because a lot of creatures in this deck have extremely high power, but not as great toughness. So this justifies their use. Plus, of course, you can pay it for Madness as well, uh, triggering it during an actual attack. So if your opponent expects a 4-1 creature to just be blocked by his little 1-1 one -one defender, suddenly this can come into play and completely flip the tables. So definitely put all three versions of that all three cards into your deck because you'll want this whenever possible. Okay, we still have one or two creatures left to add in. So another one that works extremely well with Stencia Masquerade is when we can find him. There we go, Blood Mad Vampire. Now as you can see, 4-1, extremely high power, low toughness. But, with First Strike, toughness doesn't really come into play. He also has reduced madness cost, and he doubles the effectiveness of Stencia Masquerade, and you don't even need it in play to start putting counters on him. So he can be quite an effective early attacker. And I think we're about done. We only need one more. Now, some of you might want to put in Liliana, if you uh, the Black Planeswalker uh, to help you discard because her flip ability allows you to discard a card from your hand and from an opponent's hand. Now that can be a benefit to you 
as well as powering her up. So she works very well with this deck. You can also have a look at some additional uh, damage spells. See? A nice little uh, one red madness cost. So fiery temper can work well on the deck, especially if you want to make it a bit more spell heavy as opposed to creature reliant. Now there's a lot of combinations you can use. You can go uh, spell slinger basically uh, with sort of a lighter amount of creatures so essentially you'd be swapping the creature and the spell values uh, you can see down the bottom there so you'd have something like 22 spells and 16 creatures or something like that. Now we'll move on to lands and then we should be ready to go. So let's just wrap this deck creation up. Now with a deck like this, especially when you've got lifelink creatures, you definitely want Rogue's Passages. And Blighted Gorge I'd, uh, can come in handy, but I'd argue against it for the in this case, just because it's it's often um very expensive for, for the effect you get, whereas we're trying for a deck that that moves quickly. But you can also take advantage of West De Westvale Abbey here because you have a lot of low cost creatures. So even especially since some of them become sort of less useful as the game progresses. So you could potentially flip it and get the nine seven flying indestructible lifelink haste creature. <laughs> especially if you combine it with some of the revive effects such as Ever After or um Macabre Waltz. And that just means we have the remaining swamps and plains and 60, there we go. So let's see what our base ranking is. Okay, pretty good control, decent speed, decent synergy. Now of course this deck can be refined with a few additional cards um, to end up with something like this, which sort of evens things out a bit. So you've got less spell casters, uh, less spell capabilities, but your base creature strength is a bit higher as well as your speed and synergy. So there's plenty you can do to tweak this deck to your own preferences. And there we go. So our deck is now complete. As you can see, now we're tilted slightly more towards black from our base version. So uh, we definitely want to lead with black if it's the uh, least, if you don't have any cards that immediately use a color. So just keep that in mind. As we can see, our breakdown is mostly cheap creatures, but we do have some more powerful endgame spells and creatures. So let's go on to our testing phase and see how we do with our new deck. Okay, well, let's hope for a good uh, matchup. Okay, almost perfect uh, land distribution and a nice lead up. Basically, you couldn't ask for much better than that. Okay, we are going second though, which should mean, oh, which should mean that we have a decent competition on our hands. So as you can see, we're leading with our low creatures. We can already as attack with that because it's very unlikely that they can play more than one creature in the first turn. Oh, sorry, second turn. Or we could use it to discard and pay a reduced cost if we have one had one of those in our hand. Now what we're going to do is set up for our uh, early game, which is to play Ravenous Bloodseeker, so that we can start discarding for free, and then. That will allow us to discard Stensia Masquerade next turn and attack. So as you can see the deck is already dealing damage by turn 2 and is setting itself up for additional damage very quickly. 
of course heavy um, spell decks will try and continually destroy your creatures but since your creatures are quite cheap for the most part or can be played for a reduced cost it's not that hard to replenish them especially if you tilt your deck more towards creatures as opposed to spells now generally a 4-3 out that quickly would be a big problem for a, a cheap attacking deck but we'll s you can see how we'll deal with it so as you can see I've got a 1-3 and a 1-1 one, one on the on the uh, table so what we do is attack with the 1-3 and will likely be blocked by the 4-3 as it tries to destroy it as predicted now what we do is trigger its discard ability and as you can see anything with a, with a mana ability that you can play will be highlighted in blue. So we'll put this, this on the field, pay the madness cost and suddenly we have a 3-1 first strike capable of taking down the 4-3. So that turnaround is one of the key parts of this deck and it's a very nasty trick to play when you're versing an unaware opponent of course AI will often fall for the same trick again but a human player probably wouldn't but once you've got the card out all your attacks will have first strike Okay. Now we can afford to take the two damage at this point in the game. But we want to... Ah, okay, so now we have some of our more powerful attack creatures coming into our hand. What we can do is trigger our ability again. Put out Blood Mad Vampire for its cost, for its madness cost. And we can follow that up with another Ravenous Bloodseeker. Which allows us to get in some more damage. And the fact that uh, our, ma our menace creature can't be blocked means that we'll start racking up tokens for our attacking forces up counters making them more dangerous as the fight goes on and because of that uh, ability it's forced to return an artifact to their hand which basically wastes it so it can only really be used as a blocker unless they can put an equipment or something else that they can easily replace onto the field. See there's actually a, an artifact equipment that you can play that actually costs nothing to put on the field. So that's how you would deal with that 4-3's return ability situation. Okay, time to start putting more Time to start being more aggressive. Now, we can play Kalitas and start making things a bit hotter for the enemy to try and deal with. Now, keep in mind I can discard any any of these cards and since I have so many creatures out I can get rid of Macabre Waltz so I don't really need it at this point. Whereas if my creatures were getting killed repeatedly, that's a good way of swinging back into the fight quite quickly. Now, as you can see, uh, they're trying to stop the 2-4 here. So what I'm going to do is discard the Cobra Waltz, and that stops being a problem. Plus, because one of their creatures died, we get our first zombie and everything that got through powers up especially our blood crazed or blood mad vampire 
because it gets double the effect. So they're trying to make it a powerful defender, which isn't really of much use against our army at this point. So, as you can see, this has pretty much become one-sided, but it demonstrates a lot of the techniques that you can use to be successful when using this deck. And I think we can afford to take the three damage at this point, even even though I couldn't have done anything about it, but... And of course, we've done all this with four mana. Keep that in mind. You don't actually need a huge amount of mana with this deck. And we're getting close to the finish here. Let's try... and there we go. So as you can see, this deck is surprisingly effective, especially one -on in one-on-one -on -one situations. In multiplayer, the main problem is you've got two sources of spells heading your way, which makes keeping your creatures alive long enough to actually start racking up counters and uh, strength uh, difficult. But if you're working with, say, a blue counter spell deck, or a a deck that has the ability to revive or protect your creatures, then it can still be quite effective, but it requires additional support in that situation. And keep in mind, you can tweak this to make it more spell heavy, or even more creature heavy if you wish, and adjust it to suit your playstyle. And I think that's it for today, so this is Deck Building with Bahamut. Bahamut signing off.